Welcome everyone. Uh, this is one in a series of videos that we're doing highlighting the special collections at the Museum of the Chester Historical Society. My name is Marta Daniels and I'm a trustee with a focus on a very important member of our community for many years by the name of Constance Baker Motley. She was a federal judge, she was a, a civil rights lawyer, and she was someone who was probably a, a significant figure in American history that most of us did not know when she lived here. We only knew her as a federal judge. And um, it's, it's to our great consternation that we didn't know this about her, but she was very quiet, she was humble, and it was only after her death that we began to learn more and more about her life, her extraordinary life. Not till 2015 did I even see and begin to learn about her extraordinary uh, activities in the South during the Civil Rights Movement in the 50s and 60s. And the reason I began to learn that was because of this film that I just happened to chance upon uh, on PBS one night, and it's called Justice is a Black Woman. And it said Constance Baker Motley, and I sat right up and I thought, wow, I didn't know about this film. And then after I saw the film, I thought, oh my goodness, I didn't know anything about her. And this is the film that tells her life story in, in very wonderful detail, very professionally done by Quinnipiac University. And of course, it's part of our Chester Historical Society collection. Judge Motley was known as the best kept secret in Chester. And when we began to find out more about her, the Chester Historical Society, of which she was a founding trustee in 1970, um, began to promote her life and legacy. And I'm starting this video at her home that was her seasonal residence in Chester for over 40 years between 1965 and 2005 when uh, she died. And this particular home was very important to her it was a seasonal home in which she rested. She came here to relax. It was the family's uh, vacation place. It also was the host, host house for her New Haven clan to come and have their celebrations, their weddings, their anniversaries. And it was also a place where her courtroom clerks could come and have moot court, talk about cases, rest and relax. I've interviewed several of them and they love this house as she, you know, as, as she loved it and made them feel uh, comfortable here. We really don't know much about her life and legacy and especially her important place in American history. But I will bet while you may not know the name Constance Baker Motley or Judge Motley, I'm certain that you will recognize a very important nationally known case that she was uh, responsible for. And that happened in 1977 when she was a federal judge in the Southern District of New York. And she caught the case of Bowie Kuhn versus Melissa Ludke, who was the sole female reporter at that time. She worked for Sports Illustrated. And the case occurred after the 1976 World Series where the Yankees played the Dodgers and Melissa Ludke was not allowed into the locker room to interview the players, including Reggie Jackson, who had hit three home runs. It was in 1977 when this case finally came to its conclusion in which Judge Motley famously uh, ruled in favor of Melissa Ludke and said if Melissa Ludke, a woman, could not enter the locker rooms of Major League Baseball, no one could. And with that, Bowie Kuhn gave in, and from that moment forward, all female reporters were allowed entry into all Major League sports. And this is a case that everyone knows, and they know the judge by the name of the baseball judge. So if you don't know anything about Constance Baker Motley, you probably do know that. And in fact, she was so much more than that. In order to better understand the exhibit at the museum, where we'll go after we leave her, her residence here, um, it's important to know the stages of her life. Uh, it'll make the photographs much more interesting. Uh, she was born in 1921 of an immigrant family from the West Indies. 
in, and she uh, went to school in New Haven and she graduated with high honors but could not afford to go to school. Uh, a, a wonderful philanthropist in New Haven heard her speak one time at the Dixwell Community Center and decided that, you know, he should help her if she needed help going to school and of course she did. And he was very generous and he funded her uh, undergraduate um, degree at uh, NYU and then went on to law school and funded that at Columbia University. While she was a student, she began um, assisting at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and when she graduated as a lawyer, she became the first African-American woman to be a lawyer with the NAACP. In the third year of her um, being a lawyer in 1949, she, she uh, took a case in the South and was, became the first African-American woman to step foot in a Southern courtroom. It was an historic moment. She went on from there in 1950 to create the first brief that would be used in the Brown versus Board of Education case that was brought by the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Thurgood, under Thurgood Marshall's leadership. In 1954, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund helped um, bring a successful suit to end uh, separate but equal and they used um, the public school system as an example of separate but not equal. And Motley was deeply involved in the case and they won it in 1954. Beginning in 1954, after the 1954 landmark decision, Brown versus Board of Education, uh, Constance Baker Motley became the face in the Southern courtroom to argue and to enforce the Brown decision to make segregation in public schools uh, impossible. Her first major case that probably was um, a landmark decision for several reasons happened in 1957 in Little Rock, Arkansas with the Little Rock Nine, a group of nine African-American teenagers who wanted to go to Central High School in Little Rock. Governor Faubus decided they shouldn't go despite the Supreme Court ruling and he called out the State National Guard, which then was confronted by President Eisenhower's decision to use federal troops to prevent the State Guard from blocking the children's entrance. They prevailed for a day or two and were under extreme pressure from the taunts and jeers of the children inside. And soon Governor Faubus shut down all the public schools so that nobody could go to school. The NAACP under Thurgood Marshall with Constance Baker Motley's help went immediately to the Supreme Court and demanded that federal troops enforce the Supreme Court decision Brown versus Board of Education. And after an entire year, an extraordinary summer session in the Supreme Court, it was decided that yes, federal troops can be used under the 1807 Insurrection Act, used recently in Washington, D.C., federal troops could be used to enforce a Supreme Court decision. This was a major, major step forward for equal access and equal rights under law. From that case onward, Constance Baker Motley had success in all the major universities of the South, starting with the University of uh, Georgia when she got admitted, um, Charlene Hunter Galt, who you probably know from PBS NewsHour, Charlene Hunter. And she also uh, was successful at the University of Alabama where George Wallace stood in the doorway to block her entrance of students that she had uh, shepherded through many court cases to get them admitted to the University of Alabama. And finally, to the University of Mississippi, probably one of the most difficult cases where she was successful to gain entry for James Meredith to Old Miss. And there, there was much violence. And again, federal troops were called out as they were in the University of Alabama case. And she was able, after two years and many court battles, and even trips to the Supreme Court 
she, she successfully led this uh, desegregation campaign in the South. She did over 200 civil rights cases across 11 states, including 10 Supreme Court uh, cases that she argued successfully. This was a remarkable achievement for um, a, a, a woman, an African-American lawyer, and she was the face in the Southern courtroom. People knew her in the South. As important as the school desegregation cases were of Constance Baker Motley, her work with the civil rights movement was probably equally important. She was uh, an attorney for Dr. Martin Luther King, and she was at every major civil rights campaign in the South between 1955 and 1965. She assisted Rosa Parks in the Montgomery bus boycott. She went to the lunch counter sit-ins and helped the, the uh, folks who were sitting in get out of jail and argued on their behalf. She was there for John Lewis when they were arrested as freedom riders in a very violent you know, bus uh, integration campaign, got him out of Parchment Prison, and he remained a lifelong friend of Judge Motley. Um, she also participated in Martin Luther King's Birmingham desegregation campaign, and in fact, she was the key ingredient in the success of his campaign there with the children. It was called the Children's Crusade, in which she was able to convince a circuit court judge that the children should not be expelled from school for protesting, and in fact, she got him, Judge Tuttle, to vacate their um, their ex expulsions. Martin Luther King noted that this probably turned the tide for the civil rights movement in 1963 and in fact it was obvious by August of 63 that the March on Washington to which she was given a private pass by Dr. King to be on the stage with him that this was a person of great uh, legal uh, legal finesse and a, and a great strategist and this is important and it goes right on through to the Voting Rights Act in which she walked from Selma to Montgomery the first 10 miles with Dr. King and John Lewis which resulted in the 1965 Voting Rights Act. In fact Congressman John Lewis held Constance Baker Motley in such esteem that he wrote this and had it on his congressional website page when Constance Motley died in 2005. He said, quote, in the heart of the American South, during the early days of the civil rights movement in the late 50s and 60s, there were only two lawyers that made white segregationists tremble and gave civil rights workers hope, Constance Baker Motley and Thurgood Marshall, unquote. When Constance Baker Motley lived in this house with her family, um, she was the recipient of many awards and there were many important activities that she engaged in while she was here. And I just wanted to point out a few of them. In 1993, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. In 1997, she was inducted into the Connecticut National Hall of Fame. She also probably wrote much of her autobi autobiography, this book called Equal Justice Under Law, in this house. This is one of the most important histories of the civil rights movement and also her commitment to the 14th Amendment, which was about equal justice and due process. And most of her cases revolved around that amendment and she was known for her judicial acumen when it came to knowing the Constitution. She also, during this time, she wrote the history of this 1745 colonial home, one of the oldest in Middlesex County, and she did this in 1975 as a member of the Chester Historical Society, and it is now available uh, at the Society, but it was a magnificent research piece, and there were there was something like 25 pages of writing and almost an equal number of footnotes. So it's, it's well worth uh, seeing. 
I just wanted to point that out because I thought she was uh, amazing and she did participate very much in community events here in Chester. She also was active with um, um, fundraising campaigns for candidates and I did leave out the part about her being a political person herself. For two years she was first the New York State Senate a representative from Manhattan, the first African-American woman to be so, and she also was elected the Manhattan Borough President the year after that. From there, she was appointed to be being a federal judge in 1966 by Lyndon Johnson. These were all firsts for an African-American woman. Nobody else had ever done this before. So you can imagine our shock when we realized that here was a person who had lived among us for 40 years, but we didn't know a lot of this information. So that's why I call her the best kept secret in Chester. We're now standing at the front of the house and to your right, my left shoulder, is a plaque called the Connecticut Freedom Trail Heritage Site. It was given by the state of Connecticut to represent one of the 145 sites on the Heritage Trail in our state celebrating and honoring the contributions of African-American people who have given much to freedom and democracy. The house itself uh, is privately owned and is not open to the public, but the land across the street, which the Motleys owned for 40 years, is now open and available to the public as a land preserve held in trust by the Chester Land Trust. So in addition to this preserve being open to the public. It, along with the house, was placed on the Connecticut Freedom Trail. You can see the plaque right there. Uh, at the same time, the house went on, and it is one site on the, on the map. This is an important heritage site in the eyes of the state of Connecticut, to be able to have a representative of people who are trying to get free of their conditions through civil rights through voting, through throwing off the separate but equal doctrine, and she was a major player in all of those things. The land trust provided an enormous amount of work to create the ceremony that occurred on October 6, 2019, but they also had the help of the Rotary and the Chester Historical Society who helped bring together people and supported this particular event in, in, in a great way. And it's important to, to realize that many of the things that go on in this town now about Constance Baker Motley are joint ventures and co-sponsored by many of the uh, town's organizations. Hi, we're here at the entry to the Little Rock Loop Trail, which is at the back of the property and faces the Motley House and the Preserve Kiosk. And this particular loop trail, which is a half a mile long and designated as a moderate to difficult trail, uh, was built by the president of the Chester Land Trust, Bill Myers. And it took him many months to do this. It's steep, it's rocky, it's difficult, at least for folks in my generation, uh, but it's a wonderful scenic path and it well represents the difficulty and well named for the difficulty that the legal defense fund lawyers had to bring public schools into compliance with a Supreme Court decision to desegregate. The land trust welcomes the public to visit this property, to climb this hiking trail and to enjoy the scenic beauty that was part of what Judge Motley uh, once owned. The way back and the way in crosses her public, I mean her garden, which the family used as a seasonal garden every year. They loved working in the garden and it was right on this parcel of land. And someday we hope to have it back in action. So we're here in the Chester Museum at the Mill to look at the permanent exhibit on Constance Baker Motley that marks her time uh, here in Chester as well as provides her life and legacy 
that she left uh, our world. And it begins, of course, with her early childhood in New Haven. And we see here Clarence Blakesley pictured with her in her graduation um, from NYU and her entry into Columbia Law School. She um, went from that over to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund under the tutelage of Thurgood Marshall, who later became Supreme Court Justice. And you see here the quote that I uh, read over at the House uh, about Motley and what John Lewis thought of Motley and Thurgood Marshall. It depicts the great landmark decision of Brown versus Board of Education uh, in 1954, and it showcases several of her school desegregation cases, starting with the Little Rock Nine Arkansas School desegregation case in 1957, and going on to the University of Georgia, of which there were two attempts, and then on to the University of Mississippi desegregation case with James Meredith. She not only did these school desegregation cases, but she, as I mentioned, participated in every major civil rights uh, effort campaign uh, during the civil rights movement, starting with Rosa Parks' uh, Montgomery bus boycott. She went on to help the Freedom Riders and the sit-in uh, activists to integrate munch counters in Nashville and other places. She was with Dr. King in Albany, Georgia to desegregate the city of Albany. And she was also with him, crucially, in the Birmingham desegregation campaign in the spring of 1963, where she was legally responsible for vacating, with the help of Judge Tuttle, all of the, um, the um, expulsions of the children from their schools, which changed the dynamics of the civil rights uh, movement at that time in May of 63. This culminated, of course, in um, the Birmingham uh, uh, victory and the Civil Rights March on Washington in August of 1963, of which she was a special guest of Martin Luther King. After this era of civil rights effort on her part, which spanned 1946 until 1965, where she marched with King and John Lewis from Selma to Montgomery, the first 10 miles for voting rights. And of course that happened uh, in that year that we got the 1965 Voting Rights Act. She then became a politician for a very short amount of time, starting with the New York State Senate in which she won election as the first African-American uh, Senator representing Manhattan and a year later was elected to be the Manhattan Borough President for, this, for the city of Manhattan. Also an extraordinary first for an African American woman. In that same year, 65, she purchased her home in Chester. And these are all images that were also on the storyboard uh, out at the preserve. And you can see here that this is, um, it's, this is a remarkable collection of everyday life in Chester for Constance Motley and her, fa her wonderful family. The Rotary is mentioned in the YMCA camp, and this was a place that she used for rest and relaxation. Um, we, we believe that we have had among us a very important uh, person uh, for a long time, and of course we only knew her as the judge from New York, and this shows when Johnson appointed her in 1966. She became chief judge in 1982, and she went on to make rulings that affected the rights of women, the rights of prisoners, the rights of labor, and the rights of anti-war protesters. She um, ruled on a number of different things, drug laws, gambling, Wall Street insider trading, uh, truth in advertising, but of course her most famous ruling, as I explained, was her decision in the Yankees um, Bowie Coon uh, case that finally allowed women in uh, major league uh, locker rooms. So this was an extraordinary time 
that she spent in Chester while she was a federal judge. All of this was in her past, but her judgeship was what you know, provided the um, most famous um, access to an amazing person. The Chester Historical Society has presented many programs on Judge Motley and has offered programs to other organizations about the life and legacy of Judge Motley. We also, in this museum, offer anyone who wants to learn more about a remarkable human being to come and visit our collection here and to pick up some of the resources that we, we have. The first, of course, is this video that I mentioned earlier from Quinnipiac University, shown on PBS. It's called Justice is a Black Woman. That's in our little gift shop, along with her incredibly wonderful autobiography written in 1998, published in 1998, of her life uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the battle. This is, this is her description of what she did. There's only been one biography of her. It's called Constance Baker Motley, One Woman's Fight for Civil Rights and Equal Justice Under Law, written by Gary Ford, who helped put together this documentary. It's a wonderful collection of her mostly civil rights work and her law um, legacy that she made as uh, a civil rights worker and then later as a federal judge, but mostly about civil rights. Um, we have many pictures of Judge Motley, this beautiful um, image of her in her older age, along with another beautiful picture of her sitting on her front porch in her Chester house. This is a famous picture taken by the Hartford Current, and it's a beautiful picture representing um, a life well lived.